Hello and welcome back. This is the Indoor Farmer. I am Waylon with my co-host once again, Jeremy. Got episode 33 coming at you. Uh, I remember when I was 33. Do you remember when you were 33? Still am. Still is. You know what? My mom was 29 for like 40 years, I swear. Uh, I mean, she's just in the other room. Let's go get her. No, no, like like 20 years. 29 for 20 years. That makes more sense. Sorry, Mom. I know you're watching. Uh, anyway, moving on. Got tomatoes. This is for outdoors, guys. These are, these are going to be coming in hot to the this, this spring weather. Um, maybe I'll throw you one. But well, he won't realize one's gone. I mean, they're, they're looking pretty good. Uh, those are heating pads, actually. So mm -hmm. that's pretty good for starting the seeds. I'm glad I got that. Um, cucumbers are going crazy, you guys. Look, this... This is something we talked about a second ago. These coat hangers are a nice idea temporarily uh, if you have something vining out of control, but there's no way this is going to work out long term. I mean, the weight uh, of these, especially after at when they start to fruit, but even before that, they're getting so long that it's just it's not going to be feasible. So yeah, those coat hangers are just anytime you use thin wire like this to. Uh try to support plants or hang plants from eventually there's too much weight and when it digs into that wire it'll actually start cutting into the stalk itself and damage mm -hmm. it and then everything past that end is just going to start dying off because the nutrients can't get to it that it needs so you're talking about the coat hanger wire itself mm -hmm. because this is i mean it's not not that thin but these appear really thin and i thought you were going with the the weight of that is, I mean, th these are just not going to hold the weight either at um, some point. No, those, and since they are thin wire, they'll bend, but uh, it'll actually damage the stalk itself as the, as the vine starts coming out and it gets heavier. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think all around, not a great idea for the long term. Here's, a, I had to take a picture of this. I was by myself, so I just quickly took one. But this is what, what my method was. I tried to sort of rough the end up a little bit with my finger to kind of get some of the cotton to, to pull apart, but I don't know if that was great. But you, this is actually a really good picture too to see these little things here. I didn't know what those were for a while until that's, I found out, oh, that's what they use to grab mm -hmm. on to things. It's their little arms. Yeah, it's so crazy too, the way they just go. It has to be something thin like that, but still. No, they send them out, anything they can grab a hold. Uh, even if you see them, like uh, if you have them in your normal garden, it gets out to the edge and starts getting in grass. When you go to move that vine, you'll be pulling it up and it'll just rip grass out of the ground because those are dug in. They just grab it and start pulling forward. I felt bad at, at, when I moved things around. I'm like, I don't want to break them, but just have to, you know. A lot of to. times if they're fresh, you can still uncoil them. And then when yeah. you lay it back down, try to guide it over by something else and it'll grab back on. Yeah, this one's one to vine over to the potatoes. Like, uh-oh, that's not going to be good if it gets all connected into the potatoes. There's some basil that I took out of my dying bed, we'll call it, a bed that I've let drain, drain out. Probably has a little water left in there, I suspect, but I'll have to check it out sometime. But, but no, that this, this at least wanted to keep one basil plant. And this one, you can see um, sort of the, the where we topped them off and they started to split up. That one that I transplanted was the best one that seemed to be bushing in probably the most uh, healthy, I guess you could call it. But this is a good picture. This lettuce here just wants to keep going. It's vining like crazy. Vining lettuce. I'm going to let it vine down to this other bed. We talked about that earlier. And I'm going to try to see if it'll reroot. I don't know. Maybe. It might do it. I do like having a source of lettuce because it's more readily available. Yeah, this type of thing. fast yeah. producing food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, lettuce you'll harvest first, and uh, if you do it right, you can almost harvest it last, too, and you just keep pulling off of it. Yeah, thought the potatoes were pretty big there, too, but they just keep yeah. getting bigger. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think it's a cool experiment, and I like playing with ideas with you on uh, growing the cucumbers, but as far as indoor growing, I don't know if I would try a viney vegetable. On second thought, you're probably right. Uh, I, I mean, it's know. like I said, it's really cool. Uh, we're playing with it and just trying to figure it out here and learning along the way no matter what. Uh, I don't know that the potatoes are a great idea indoors either. Yeah, I, I was 
I mean, I get it though. They probably love they the, the conditions in a basement. Somebody that got a hold of me, they asked me, uh, they said, you need a. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, they said, you need to feed those and water those. And I thought, well, I have been, but not, not a ton. I mean, it's more like an experiment. Like, I've mostly just been spraying fish water onto the soil. Like a, like a heavy coat of it. Mm -hmm. Not even pouring a bunch of water. Like, so for them to get, like, that crazy, I thought it was good. Because, for one, not, the containers probably aren't, that, aren't big enough for how many are going. And I wasn't giving them a ton of water. But, but potatoes are a little bit of a uh, fall, winter crop. So I don't think they need a ton of direct water, but that's that's just my experience from these. But they also don't get a ton of light right there. So I mean, little lights that are. You just there. need to research the grow season in Idaho, man. Look up their climate. That's the season that you need to replicate for those in your basement. <laughs> Idaho, here we go. Right. Well, I mean, that's probably true. Uh, that's probably a quick way. No, I was I was, I was vastly impressed when I walked down to. Uh, today and saw these they were they were massive i was like holy crap dude those potatoes are taking off they are getting out of control i feel like they're gonna fall over and then break and then something before they produce i don't know I'm i mean paranoid. look at how beautiful green they are on top though i mean the stalks and stems look how thick those branches coming up are they're healthy plants i've been cutting off any sort of yellowing but a lot of times that's because they're covered up and they're not getting enough sun similar to the cannabis plant, mm -hmm. uh, but also they're not getting that much light anyway. Just those two little lights. Isn't well, and, and what I noticed a lot too, as far as growing indoors as to growing outdoors is outside there's a sunrise, a sunset. So the sun travels throughout mm -hmm. the day. So in our basements, in your houses, sure. wherever you're growing, your lights don't move. So it only casts rays in a certain angle. Um, I found sometimes you can just take some of the smaller branches, bend them under another branch, so the leaf will still be getting light on it, but mm -hmm. it creates a pocket for more light to get to the lower branches. Um, there's different ways of manipulating it, using reflective surfaces all around too, to so help ricochet right. light to lower, but it's still a weaker light because it is a reflection. Kind um, of the fine tuning of it. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I've seen some systems where they have rail lights and there's actually like a turnstile, but it was a hydroponic system, but it's just a tower grow and it spins, but the light is exterior and it stands here. So as the course of the day it just keeps yeah, making slow revolution, so it's mm -hmm. constantly changing. But that's, that. that's yeah. an expensive system, probably. Uh, a we lot of us don't have the money for that. We find something at home with just like a single solar panel that would power that during mm -hmm. the day. And maybe at night you wouldn't have to it wouldn't have to spin right mm, I don't, yeah i mean if the light's off you know you, it shouldn't have to spin at all yeah it I only mean, spins you, when the light's like, on as soon as the light shuts off it's it's not right. spinning. yeah I, I could see doing that but that's down the road i that's that, i keep i keep uh, bringing myself back to the fact that i need to focus uh going forward on doing something that's going to turn a profit i mean i know you know you don't always want to be concerned about profit, but if I can start to make money to, by providing like a single crop or something, then I can start to use that money to put back into it and experiment or do other things that I want to do that, that aren't necessarily going to produce anything. Um, so that's what I'm, that's where I'm at. I'm like, I have all these crazy crackpot ideas, but you can't really get to those until you got a solid base of something that's going to provide uh, at least that, that extra capital. To, to do those things I mean a lot of there's a lot of ideas that have to that 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 will have a return like mm -hmm. um did I ever show you the picture of that uh the it looks like a wheelbarrow but it's it's like an old school uh water spigot from the like a well that you pump oh, except okay. it's so big that you have two hands on this thing like a like a weightlifting bar and you're just and, and it's not harder it's just the weight of your body but the thing just pumps so much more water. I mean, I'd love to buy these these inventions that other people are doing too, but you know, you got to build up to that. So. Okay. Well, what are you mixing right here? Yes, this is a Pro Mix and Ocean Forest, Fox Farms Ocean Forest. So you put a little water in there to where a lot of people will explain this better than I can. 
but you, you want to grab some of it and clump it up and you want to see it sort of stay, hold a shape, but kind of start to crack apart into mold, to like a few pieces, like four or five pieces. So you grab a clump of that dirt and you want it to, I don't know, how would, would you describe like a, just enough moisture for it to stay kind of close to a, a ball, but then it kind of falls apart. Um, so there's a, there's just a right amount that you're looking for, but that's for most plants. And, and this, since being a soil plant, I figured that would be how it likes it. But I watered it in anyway afterwards. But I, right now I'm just cutting some of the lower branches and, and things because I can't, I, I'm spinning the plant, but I can't spin it that much because they're so close together that the leaves and the branches are getting all stuck together and, mm -hmm. and I'm damaging things. So it's, uh, it's a fine space that I have there. It's not, I might want to rearrange this whole thing and do lighting differently too and have the pot one forward and one backward instead of side by side. And then I could do the lights instead of the lights going the way they are, do them one on each wire. Okay. With separate wire. Uh, I don't know. I mean, regardless, right it's now, they look successful. Uh, I think they'll produce something. Your, your trial here is, is doing amazing from just cubing up a potato and putting it in soil. The only thing I've given it is fish water and the the soil mixture. There may be, there was some uh, top, I did top this one off with uh, worm castings. Mm -hmm. We talked about that. Um, I don't think we talked about it on the show though. You said it's probably not a good idea, or at least you've heard from multiple sources that it's not a good idea to mm -hmm. top off anything with worm castings, that, you, that you're much better off actually mixing it into your soil if you do soil. What, what, what was that reasoning? Um, they said it had to do with the worm castings and it actually, the way it breaks down and goes into your soil, it'll start clumping and hardening and making clay-like soil on the top of your pot. So when you water, it just pushes all the water off to the side. It makes it so dense and hard that your roots can't push through mm -hmm. this. And so your roots are going to get restricted. And they suggested when using worm castings, mix it into your soil mixture and so it's already in the soil sure don't dress the top because it'll really damage the top of the soil or can damage the top and hurt your plant yeah so i did do that on this uh, on these guys here but topping them off i think will help but i don't think it's uh oh and one so it's all right just a waistband people just a waistband don't worry about it Look, the more you put yourself on the camera when you're the only person in the room, the more you're going to have points like that. I know. Change your name to Waylon the Indoor Plumber. Well, listen, if we get we get up to the those if we get those subscribers up a few more points, like another mm, 950 more subscribers, then maybe I get a few bucks and I can pay like a local, you know, uh, young boy to like film me like, no, no, let's I'm see. out no. <laughs> no, no maybe like a little film student no, no uh, uh, I can find somebody that might want to hold the camera for me and then you know give them give them a few bucks you know give them a few more someday we'll see we'll see but no I'm, all I'm saying is it would be a lot easier to have like the you know the cameraman or a slash producer. I mean, I know there's a lot of kids out there who are in film school, a lot of like my nieces and nephew age that would be interested in doing something just to get that experience that doesn't give them any pay, you know? Get that experience, man. It's worth more. Comment below. Uh, no. So you're, you're still just adding more soil, huh? Dude, I need to add more even still after this because it, it the water I watered it down. I didn't want to pat it down too hard and it sunk down even more. So I, I guess that's a good thing. I want it to be the most volume possible to give more potatoes. Because I, I should explain why I'm doing this. They they say what I've looked up is that when you when you trim some of the lower branches and then you mound them, which is basically building the soil up around each stalk in a mound type of a shape and I guess that's more in if you're outside and you're doing like a line of potatoes you would do that this is different of course I could just fill it up um, but 
that gives you literally, literally more space for potatoes to grow because that whole stalk will then become more like a root underground and it will form more potatoes. Hmm. That is the idea. Very interesting. So even in this small container, I want to give myself the most, you know, the, the biggest chance that I can, you know, for more potatoes. Even if I imagine it being uh, like a cluster of small potatoes, and they call those seed potatoes, I can use those to plant outside. That could be an interesting th way to, to do like a, huh. in the winter, plant seed potatoes for in the, well, actually you, you can plant potatoes in the ground uh, in the fall. That's something to look into. Well, and I would look into smaller potatoes naturally if you're going to grow inside more of a red Reds. new a red Reds. potato, maybe a fingerling potato. Mm. You know, there's other small varieties that you can find that, you know, would be more suitable for smaller areas. Of, Sweet potatoes, too. As opposed to some giant Yukon Golds or something or <laughs> huge russes. Just one, just one per bucket. Right. I, I probably could have done that. Now looking at it this way, they're, they're sort of fighting for space. It probably would have been better if I did just one piece in, in each container. Hey, you never know, man. Next thing you know, you might be getting one of those uh, kiddie pools that are going to be going on sale the here in the that. spring. The people are doing that a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's a cheap grow bed, but especially in your basement like this, throw it on the floor in the summer. It'll keep the soil cool enough. I want to know if potatoes would grow in cocoa. I don't know about that. I'm telling you, we could grow potatoes with aquaponics. If you have a grow medium that the potatoes will grow in. Right, they won't grow in the clay pebbles. That's what I was wondering. Like, I don't know, I guess they probably wouldn't. Maybe they would. It would be all weird looking. It would be a weird shape. <laughs> it might still work. Uh, anyway, but, but no. Um, some plants don't want to be in water all the time. So I'm going to have to get more used to which ones do what. And some things want to be just floating in the water, like uh, lettuces and things like that. They really just want to be in there all day. Uh, then you got like tomato plants, which want uh, supposedly want to be drenched in water and then drained and dried and then drenched in water, like so a constant back backflow uh, or like a flood and drain table they call it. Um, but yeah, that's. But then you have things like marijuana that can be done multitudes of ways. So it's it's interesting seeing the differences. Yeah, it's all diversity in the species. Um, I mean, it's just like us. Every one of us, you know, takes different nutrients based on what our body requires. And so, you know, even though they're all in the plants, you know, whether the vegetables or fruits or, you know, the nightshade families, you know, there's all similarities. But ultimately, every plant, even tomato plants, every plant needs different nutrients than the one sitting next to it. So, so would you say that ultimately, in the end, it might be good to have the multiple setups, but then try the same plants or the same produce in each setup and see what happens. Yeah, see what, and, see what thrives. Yeah, I mean, you might have, a, might be surprised. Your success rate, you know, will be based on how the plant reacts to the environment. And ult I, I guess I would just say making the environment suitable for that plant's, um, you know, requirements, what it likes what it right. you know loves and thrives in if you can create that environment but not all of these are the same and that's what that's what i'm seeing here some of your grow beds as you can tell you know the, mm -hmm. the lighting is definitely well, different for the same though say we get uh and, and that's one reason i'm writing everything down now finally mm -hmm. um is that say we can get we can reasonably say the environment is equal between say like one type of lettuce we'll just say um, but that same type of lettuce is being grown in multiple systems, being that they're just different delivery methods of the nutrients, mm -hmm. not necessarily different amounts of light or, or uh, humidity, you know. So once we get to that point, then I can really find out, oh, you know what, this plant actually goes against what they say or, or what most people say or, you know, because I, I really I believe strongly that there's a lot of things out there that can be done differently than what the people who have come before say that, oh, that's the best way. And maybe that's arrogant, maybe that's naive, uh, but there's so many new things being found out about being able to specifically hone in the environmental, you know, uh, uh, changes and manipulations that we're doing indoors, you know, and outdoors. 
for that matter. There's well, so much outdoor stuff. Without here. experimentation, we would never push forward and, and do better than we've ever exactly. done. So you're, so you're with me on the experimentation. I should do some more research, though. I, I say I talk like I don't. I mean, I've done, I've done plenty of research. It's just that a lot of that stuff just floats around in your head until you can find the time to use it. And so I feel like I should really just hone in on what, I'm, what I need to find out at that time and not try to cloud up a lot of future ideas and thoughts about this and that and vermiculture like i can't wait to get with do with worms and, and, and you know learn all that but i don't want to cloud my mind up with that before i get there i don't know maybe that's that's silly too but these are just things i i have to do to keep my keep my brain straight sometimes <laughs> so much going on like these this is a, i took these pictures just to show you guys how like really clear I thought and, and clean my tank is I don't I don't clean it out I don't re recycle the water or anything it's just the system doing its job and this oh let me do that um, yeah I do need to go back to show this yeah the mint you guys mint it's uh, looks like it's dying over here but it's just because it's going crazy stretching out and the nutrients and everything else isn't all that great these these are fish rocks that came out of like an aquarium that when i moved i was like oh there's a grow medium i'll use right now and this is literally a long-term battle in this in this ice cream bucket you guys this is not the best picture to, to show for there we go this thing over here this weed i mean people say it's a weed i'm not sure Comment below if you think it's a weed. This thing over here, um, and then the mint plant. And I'm gonna see which one wins. Which one wins, guys? I don't know. One of them, would you say that we can reasonably assume that one of them is going to die though? Even if I keep watering them both. Um, over time, one can overtake the other as far as uh, the mint's the root system then, yeah. could get it way bigger. Um, but if it is a weed, the properties of weed usually are, you know. They find a way. Conquer, <laughs> conquer, conquer, conquer. So that's, that's, so that's that's why I feel like this is interesting, you guys. It's so exciting. If you find out about mint, you think, oh, mint. We use mint. We muddle it in our drinks. No, but mint is like invasive invasive species yeah it grows wild outside of my house in the flower yeah. beds i just leave it well yeah i mean it's helpful it's you pretty know what to do. Yeah, it smells like, good yeah didn't you say it um does it repel something i want to say it does i think it might help with mosquito repellent but i'm not 100 mm -hmm. percent on that i know the there's smell. some other ones mm -hmm. that do i can see that but no this is going to be we're going to keep you updated on this you guys it's a uh, very it's kind of like watching paint dry but at some point there's going to be a victor so we might take bets. No, that's we can't take bets. That's illegal. Sorry. Episode fifty-two here. <laughs> Mint's not looking good. Uh, <laughs> way past the time where I've already, you know, <laughs> built a much bigger system. But no, this is it's funny. It's funny. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I started doing. I did clip some of these off, some of these long ones, and harvest you could call it. But I didn't end up doing anything with it. Um, this I keep coming back to this you guys because I put this pepper plant in the PVC system and I've been watering it directly just by spraying the fish water on it and in this episode here I'm gonna you're about to see what I thought was a sad moment I don't know we've been debating that we'll see what see what happens the flower as you can see starts to die and then fall off and I thought that was my fault I thought well maybe I you know I didn't water it enough or something but what what's actually happening is this this plant over here is maturing faster than the other plant it's almost like a dwarf version because it something different about its nutrients version versus the other ones is that other pepper plant I think I show a picture in the end here but it's way bigger um, but did not flower faster okay so I did I transplanted it into dirt which it's going to be much happier there I can give it a lot more water and it's going to be healthy. I think I, I don't know what's going to happen, how many peppers I'll get, but this one here is like twice the size. Um, I staked it up because it was so twerked over there by the cucumbers. But yeah, this one here is because it's been in that constant flow of nutrients and 
for a long time it was coming right through that tube so I mean you're you, you just right there you know just getting it all so yeah that's it guys I mean this is a this has been a quick you know kind of a part two almost of the last episode to kind of catch you guys up on what what's been going on but I didn't want to just skip all this stuff because this is it, we talked about this a little bit ago. Um, we talked about how this is the the part that's boring. This is the part where you're just waiting and you're and you're doing little tweaks, little changes. Oh, it's not much here, but but maybe uh, you're, you're going to try something new today or tomorrow. So I wanted to show you like new new growers. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's it can be pretty boring at times. There's nothing. I can't really eat anything there right now, you know. But uh, one day, I mean. You know, you you've grown outdoors, so mm -hmm. when you get ready to go outdoors here so shortly, I'm gonna, you know, I'm hoping to help you out. Maybe uh, we'll do something, expand what you've done over there. But that's going to be interesting in a different way because you can time it almost. In this mm -hmm. indoors, it's almost like you're floating freely. Like, well, when do I want to plant? I don't know. I can plant anytime I want. <laughs> and so, and it, but that doesn't really push me to do it faster you know what right I mean? getting it having that um time re restraint in the seasons kind of pushes you to go okay well we gotta harvest mm -hmm. now and so i gotta get myself on more of a schedule when it comes to that yeah we're it's it's definitely a limited growth season so it's a go 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 and every mm -hmm. year you don't know exactly when you're going to be able to move outdoors so right. every year is different you could get out real early but then you know a big freeze comes through out of nowhere you could you know yeah. Yeah. have three week later start next year but it's the best season you've had because the weather was consistent and plenty mm -hmm. of rain up front and so it is it's a, it's a more, little more time constraints like I would say you know you got to be ready for whenever you can right. move outdoors or just be prepared for a late harvest which is fine too well and, the, and when I found out that there are fall um, crops I thought well man that's mm -hmm. That, why, I don't know why more people don't take advantage of that. The potatoes and uh, like winter wheat, onions, uh, different things like that. I mean, yeah, I would do that as much as possible. I just don't think I have the space outdoors. I still, I'm still honing my craft here, um, and I think I'm still in what you might call experimental mode. But once we finish this bigger, bigger grow bed, I think um, it'll be time to really put some some of something to the test I mean I, I should just take that whole bed and try one thing and see what kind of yield what kind of what kind of size I can right get. I don't know we'll see we'll see you guys um, you know until next time hey listen send us a comment like you guys might might have leaps and bounds of, of knowledge and you want to give that knowledge to somebody look I, I'm all for uh, disseminating knowledge but but I do know that a lot of people have different opinions on things, so I try to keep that as far as uh, you know neutral as far as that goes, because I think everybody has. He said it many times. You got to find your own way of doing it. You know, you, you got to find your own method. And heck, once you get your method down, try the next method. But thanks for watching, guys. Got anything for him, Jeremy? Happy growing. Thanks, guys.